Today we are going to talk about state, state management and how state is used in React. Uh, we will talk about use state as a hook that React uses to manage state, uh, but it's not a full state management like uh, solution. Of course, later in the course, we'll talk about context API and some other libraries, but for now, the most common case of uh, use state, we will use it with objects, with variables, with arrays and stuff like that. I hope you learn well with this. Now, let's talk about state. Here we have a React component. And we begin answering the questions, what is state? Well, state in React applications is the condition of our component. For example, we have an H1 here. If we want this value to be dynamic and changing, we can do it through state. Because if we change it through JavaScript itself, it will render the whole component, like the whole application, update the whole application, and it will not good, be good for our application. Because in case of something like calculator or um, in case of something like, um, say you have a wait time for an event, it will be very costly and it will basically render our application unusable. So we change the components in our, in our application through state. Uh, how do we import state? Well, state is a hook in React. And a React hook is basically a method or a function that a built-in function inside React where we can use it as a named hook, uh, any hook that you want. For example, for, and they always like React hooks start with use. And their name is as suggestive, for example, you state, React hook for state is called use state so that's and it, since it's a name it uh, import we just do this comma use state so we tell it or we can say like import use state from react so what we told our application is to import the name it function of use state from react however this function is called hook in React. So now we learned how to import use state. Uh, how do we declare state? Well, let me just write it first. Const say count equals use state say zero. Now, what does this mean? Well, to declare state, first we create a variable then we give it a name then the assignment operator then hook like then initial value okay we know variable we know name of the variable we know assignment operator and we've learned the hook use state but what this is to us like how can we use this well basically like any dynamic javascript value we can say count and if we go to our application, we see we have zero in our application rendered after. But then how do we change the state? Well, to change the state, we need actually two variables. We need to destructure two variables from this use state. Normally, we use an array, but you can use just about anything. We say, for example, count and the second value, which represents the change in our state. We call it set anything that named, we name it first, set count, for example. Now, let's create a button, for example, button, we say change. 
okay on click what we do we run a function for example change to one this is the name of our function now how do we create functions in a react application well just like any other javascript we write it here like const change to one equals to this what does this function return well we want set count like set count to for example 10 let's see what this does now we have our state as 0 and if we click we see 10 if we click we see 10 why well in our code we said that our state our count is 0 see the initial value is 0 which represents this now we said whenever we click on click is an event which says on click of this button like implement this function and this function all it does is set count which means change the value of count to 10 so this is basically how state is working in javascript now we create an application where we have a counter a button for increase a button for decrease and a button for reset we have used state imported we create the state from two values count as the initial value set count as the value of change states then we said use state the initial value is zero remember you can use booleans here you can use strings here you can use objects here like this name and we will talk about that as well but for now let's just deal with this zero now in count we want to show the counts on click like when this button clicked i want add count like add to count or on when we click on the minus button i want minus count when we click on reset button i want reset count now let's create these functions functions to change states now we say add count but let's make it an arrow function const add count equals to well usually set count to now this is an interesting point because if we just set count to a number then it will be always that that number however we want to set count to count from the previous number what does it mean whenever we click plus it will like increase our state by one like from zero it makes it one however the next time that we click we want to click we want to count it from one not from zero so how do we do that well we take the previous state like count and you can name this anything but this prev represents our current value and we make an arrow function which takes this prev as an argument now it's an argument and we say prev plus one so what did we do here we we give set count a function 
the function takes one argument which we named it prev and returns prev plus one which means make our count which is zero currently to the current count which is zero then make zero plus one well this only matters if we add for example if we have if we click it and it returns one then we start from one if we click it from two then we start from two so now let's create the other function const minus minus count equals two this one also set count also prev but prev minus one well const reset count equals this one we set count simply to zero because we want to well we want to reset it now let's see if these functionalities work in our application we go to our application we see three buttons and if we click on plus it will give us one if we okay two three four and minus gives us minus and reset gives us reset however if we click here then it will goes to negative how do we prevent that well we simply add a conditional for our minus count we say count if count is smaller than one then return return means do nothing then if not if this condition is not met set count to the previous count minus one so now let's take a look at our application okay if now we click minus nothing returns because it's smaller than one then if we click plus and minus works until zero and of course reset works however the most common application of uh, use state in react is dealing with forms for example when a user changes an input for example writes his name or something like that how do we handle that well since the form changes means the dynamic content which is changing and we should use use state well we learned the procedure first we do use state or in curly braces because this is I name it like import after that we create let's create an array name then set name as we said this is how we name our state and first let's be a string like visitor let's have uh, an h1 which says for now hello visitor we have an input which type of text value let's say visitor let's have a button which says submit something like this now since this is a form let's put it in a form form okay now if we go to our application we see that we have hello visitor visitor and submit okay let's make this dynamic let's make this visitor our name not much changes because the initial value is visitor however we want to take the value of this input and put it in the name how do we do that well this has a value so we can 
directly make it like the dynamic value of visitor. This is the first step. The second step, we say on change, we have on click, which is an event when you click something. On change is an event which is triggered whenever you change something. For example, you are writing text and any letter that you write is a change. So it's called on change. Well, on change, what we do, we use a callback function. This callback function takes an argument of E or event or anything that you name it. However, this E represents this whole input, E. Okay, so in our function we give this as an input. Okay, E and after this, this function which returns another function takes set name and makes the name as E as this input which has a target object target which has a value which is exactly the text that we have in the name however when we change it that change becomes the text okay now we know that and we have name let's test it okay now we have visitor how about if we make it for example Frank we see Frank. How about if we make it um, Karim? We see Karim. So this is how we change state. So initially we have visitor. Now if we change this to Frank, it will be Frank. If we change it to Kareem, it will be Kareem. So this is how the whole state management works. Now, a state can be just anything. For example, if we here, we have person, set person, and instead of a string or a boolean or a number, we have an object for example this person's name is empty first his job is empty his age is empty or zero for example now let's say here we say name job and age for name we only we have person but how do we access name well name is a key in person object which is in our state we just say person dot name for job we say person dot job for age we say person dot age Let's give it a name of Frank Engineer 25, 26, something like that. And let's go to our application, see if it works. Well, we have name Frank, job engineer, and age 26. And if we change it in our uh, VS Code, like something, for example, here, Kareem. Doctor age 26, it will change just as the same. Now, let's use the most common case of using arrays, using state, which is an array of objects. For example, we have this array of objects. The first object has an ID of 1, a name of Kareem, and a job of engineer. Now we have two more objects which we should like use comma to uh, separate them. Then we have Frank 
then we have Miller this one is a doctor this one is a nurse something like this how do we use state to show these values inside this array well very easy what we do we create a JavaScript like container we do person since our initial value is an array we and the array contains many objects what we do we use an array method as we discussed in JavaScript ES6 we do an array method and for person we just write p this p returns one element one object of this person represents that well what we do here we say return for example and we return this h1 for example now this p represents one object inside this person so we say again javascript p dot name for example then in the second one we say h2 p dot job and after both like the name and job shown we create a horizontal line now let's look at our application and if we minimize we see we have Karim which is engineer Frank which is a doctor a nurse which is Miller which is a nurse now returning to our VS code I understand this might look strange at first but trust me this is the most common use case where we uh, retrieve databases and search for the names this is how we search and uh, this is how we represent our data this is of course with databases at first you have a an empty array then after fetching the data you do this map which we will learn but for now it's just important to know that this is how your state works now let's talk about another subject which is react uh, third-party libraries a third-party library is a library designed before which you can use it to manage your application better for example if you want to use bootstrap you install a bootstrap library which is uh, customized to react or tailwind or react icons or other libraries that have a use to react for example here we use react icons we want icons in our application so what we do we search for a library of react icons and let's go to google say we want react icons fortunately the first result we have react icons which is a library for any icon that you want to use with react and it gives you documentation how you install it but let's do it like on our own to install any library in react what you do you start with npm which is not package manager any package manager that any package that not wants to install you use npm which is not packet manager then install or you can shorten it with i then the name of the library in this case it was react icons if we get back to our application we have react icons sorry this is we made a mistake npm i react icons well now most libraries work differently 
let's look at the do documentation of how do we use this this says first you import the icon that you want as a name it you know import for example we want the icon of beer we say import fa beer via from react icons dot fa so let's just import this and see what it gives us and back to our vs code we just paste it and how do we use this well let's get back to the documentation it says we have a standard react component this one is a class but it says just use it like a tag for example if we come back to our application and do this and run npm start okay we have to cd into props up and run npm start okay this port is busy now if we go to our application we see a beer okay how about other icons well let's get back to our react icons library and see some icons for example we want linkedin now how does this library works this library contains like hundreds of other libraries and they are each like divided by this see import icon name from react icon name dot by it says anything in this box icons is represented as bi anything in bootstrap icon is represented with bs anything with feather icon represented with fi so let's say we want something in game icons and it's gi with the icon name so we have say now let's import this one from react icons dash gi of course we know because we copy the name and starts with gi now let's render it well to render it just copy this and do this close it down if we get back to our application and go to it we see a ball which represents our icon I understand this is a much like more complicated subject but when we create navigation sometimes we need icons and we have to use a library like react icons when we create styling sometimes we need a library like bootstrap 